and welcome to the Tea Party Hearty channel. We're glad you stopped by. There I was, coming home from a nice time at church and anxious to celebrate a fine St. Patty's Day in my favourite way, watching two of my favourite Emerald Isle movies, John Wayne and the Quiet Men, and followed up by the young Sean Connery in his pre-James Bond days in Derby O'Gill and the Little People. But what should happen when the film started rolling? Ah, the eyes were attacked where they had not been before. I've been watching these movies for years and now all of a sudden due to PC culture, oh that pesky Microsoft Windows and Mac, oh Mac, and the hangover of at me too. The films were no longer the pristine joy, but polluted by the indoctrination that's been floating in the air for decades now. John Wayne's manhandling of Maureen O'Hara, oh gast, what am I watching? What is the whole Irish town watching? Even an elderly lady who brings John Wayne a stick to bait the new bride with. This line put in for a laugh for the exaggeration of the situation is now a moment that has been stripped of all humour, like the bone in your arm. PC demands no laughs. You can't be politically correct and still laugh. That is offensive. It's racist. Don't you know everything is racist now? Why, if you call a movie Black Beauty, now, well, you better be ready for both the NAACP and the At Me Too gang calling after you and coming after you hard. And the smoking. Oh, poor old Mr. Wayne died of lung cancer, and considering how much he smoked in this film, is it any surprise? One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Oh, every four to five minutes the chimney was gushing. What used to be a standout as someone blinking was now causing a first alert fire alarm in my brain. And his manner of disposing the cigarettes was astounding, surely in any era. He tosses lit cigarettes in bushes, on wooden floors. He just doesn't care. And he seems oblivious that the glowing red section at the end is actually a fire waiting to burn whatever it touches. And if the smoking wasn't enough to rip a modern person out of the film, meh, then there was Wayne's stolen kisses from the last. one you are. I hope gave you leave to be kissing me. So you can talk. Of course, he got the reward of a stolen kiss from the pre-feminism era too. A solid slap on the face. Steal a kiss and you get a slap upside your own kisser. That was the rule before lawsuits and career-destroying retaliations that carry the day now. Unless, of course, you happen to have the right political letter by your name. You know, like a D. And the right skin color. And you're serving in Virginia. Fair facts. Virginia. Did I still love the movie? Oh, of course. Was it disrupted by tiny little social justice warriors screaming in me mind constantly? Well, we hope you had a great St. Patrick's Day. And if you're wondering about what happened while watching Derby O'Gill, well, watching James Bond get his clock clean twice was a bit odd. And remembering that Sean Connery is Scottish and not Irish, eh, that was a bit odd too. But oh, Darby and the King of the Little People are fine enough distraction to make it all worthwhile. Thanks for stopping by the Tea Party Hardy channel for something a little different for the holidays. Um, we hope you had a really good St. Patrick's Day. If you'd like to click like, that'd be great. Um, if you want to subscribe, oh, cool. Come on back anytime. We'd love to have you here. Bye. There'll be no locks or bolts between us, Mary-Kate except those in your own mercenary little heart.